Hello, hello. This is Steph. I am back. I have another episode that I wanted to release today, and it was about tapping into your intuition and your business. But this is um, school vacation week for many of us, and it is for me. And my kids are actually in Jamaica with their dad. So you would think I would be very excited to have a massive block of time to myself for multiple days in a row which I was really looking forward to. I was supposed to go visit a friend in the Carolinas and get work done, kind of do both, you know, work and play. And that fell through. So I'm, you know, at home and doing my best to be productive. But I was so worried. This is their first time leaving the United States. They're with their dad and their older sister. Um, But I literally could not sleep the night they left. I was up even at four in the morning, which is when they were supposed to head to the airport. I had multiple days in a row of just horrible sleep. I don't usually get to talk to them when they're away, which is really disturbing. But I said to their dad, listen, you're out of the country. It's their first time. I would like to be in greater contact daily just to make sure everybody's okay. I would feel better. My daughter did text me back they FaceTimed me. He FaceTimed me yesterday in the morning, which was day two or three. I don't know. It was a big weight off my shoulders just to see them where they are, to know they're okay. I'm not really the worry wart type, but clearly my body (laughs) disagrees with that. So anyway, so I know that a lot of moms, I've run into a lot of moms at the gym this week and just seeing what's going on with friends. It's like, Some have taken time off from work. It doesn't really feel like a vacation. Some people are going away. Some people are kind of trying to do some work while they tend to their kids. It's just a it's just a very draining week, period. And if I'm feeling this way, my kids aren't even with me. I can only imagine how other people are feeling who are trying to keep their business going. And you know, there's always that pull between being there for your kids, taking care of yourself and your, you know your partner, your other loved ones, and taking care of your business. Like, and my brain is fried, by the way, because I have not had sleep. So this might not sound right. But what I did, this is what I do sometimes when I have time. And obviously my kids aren't here, so I'm very fortunate. And I've shifted my business away from clients to content, which gives me a little more freedom. And obviously I still have schedules for interviews. I have a whole bunch coming. And I just had somebody that was hiring for a trial run for last week. I was so excited to have a virtual assistant that I might be able to count on. And unfortunately, it's not. This person sounded great, interviewed great, had a beautiful portfolio, was a guy. I assumed I'd be hiring a woman. But he just kind of hit some barriers and I'm trying to work through with it. But it's video stuff that I was he was going to help me with. So I'm trying to work that through with his agency and see how I can work with him on some other things. But such a bummer because I really, this week was my productivity week, let's get going kind of thing because my kids aren't here. So anyway, so what I did is I have an Oracle card deck and I use it sometimes when I feel like, okay, my mind is all over the place. I have plans. I've been doing strategy calls with one of my other friends who's an entrepreneur, we've been trying to help each other map some things out for this next quarter and strategically get things ironed out and get more motivated because we both have, she had a really good January, February, March, and then hit a little bit of a slump. I had a really tough, um, her positive months were my dark months. (laughs) So anyway, so we're helping each other out. And when something falls through, you're I think your initial response is typically, okay, what do I I need to do to like push this through and make this work? So anyway, so what I did with this Oracle card deck, it's called Sacred Rebels. It's by Alana Fairchild. It's one of the most beautiful card decks. It's my first card deck. I actually only have two. It's so beautiful. The artwork is beautiful. The what the descriptions are when you pick your card are just like, wow. So it was so spot on because the question I asked, I was shuffling, and the question that I asked was, okay, I'm seeking guidance. 
angel, source, God, whatever you guys believe in to call in, you get quiet and you say, okay, what is the question? And for me, it was, okay, what is the message? What do I need to know to move forward with my content and this plan that I'm putting together? What, what is the main message? And while shuffling, a couple cards popped out. And then there were two that I picked. So altogether four. So the, this is the first one, which is a beautiful um, image. I will share it. Uh, I will put that in the show notes. I will put it in the YouTube of this so you can see it. But I want to read it to you guys because I just thought, oh, this is it. This is exactly in tune with the other episode that I'll release about three women entrepreneurs who I've followed, who did extremely well, but all kind of burnt out. And they all came out of that with a very similar realization, a, a, an epiphany, which is really about being, being yourself. And so that episode will come out. But in the meantime, I'm going to just read this to you. The card that I picked is called softly softly the tender touch and there's an image of a woman with try to describe it but she actually has kind of a glow around her head with jewels and braids and it's a little bit like a halo with almost like a oh I can't think of the name of the flower that's this beautiful flower that you usually see associated with yoga. She looks like she has light at her third eye, like the center of her forehead. And then she has tears coming down her cheeks. And then there's like a puff of smoke or mist almost. And her hands are right below her mouth gathered together. Oh, the flower is a lotus flower. Yeah. And there's like an energy ball um, almost in her hands. It's really interesting. And this is what it says. The feminine wisdom of gentleness can assist you now. When we are at a point in life when we want to attain things, when we want to attain greater things but don't necessarily have a proportionally greater supply of energy at our disposal, it is time to work smarter rather than harder. This is the way of feminine wisdom. So I've had very little energy um, because my sleep's so messed up. And so I just read that I was like, amen. Okay, here's the rest. However, a cultural ignorance of the feminine way currently prevails. We are generally taught that the more force we use, the more we try to make things happen, the more we will achieve. The feminine way is not about force, nor is it about driving, striving, pushing, or grabbing at what we can in order to create. It's about inviting what we wish for to come into the space we have provided for it, internally and in our lives. This method cultivates more energy, causes less stress, and attracts what is desired. It is manifestation by invitation rather than by will or force. There's an old story that the sun and the wind were debating about who was more powerful. After boasting about their prowess, they made a wager. A man walked down the street with a coat on. The wind and the sun decided that whomever could force the coat off the man was the most powerful. The wind began demonstrating its impressive power. It blew and blew and caught underneath the coat, pulling it and nearly ripping it right off the man. But the man wrapped his coat around himself more tightly to protect himself against the force of the wind. Mm. Eventually, perhaps temporarily out of, out of puff, the wind gave up. The sun took over. He shone down, becoming brighter and brighter until the man slipped off his coat, slung it over his shoulder, and walked down the street, quite possibly wondering what was happening with the weather that day. The wind attempted to do by force what the sun was able to do by being. You are being asked to surrender your forcefulness, your determination, and your intense activity, even if just for this moment. Does this mean that you have to surrender the goals you were chasing through those endeavors? Certainly not. This is not about letting go of achievement. It's about understanding the process of manifestation in a more intelligent way. There is a way of creating that gives you energy and doesn't leave you utterly worn out. It's about allowing what you want to come to you. 
Be yourself absolutely, naturally, and with ease. Shine your light and allow your presence to invite that which you wish to receive. It is about cultivating an energetic affinity with what you seek rather than feeling of lack and need. Do you see the subtle but important difference? To feel that you are already a naturally abundant being who gratefully invites more of what you want into your life is rather different to feeling lack, fear, and wishing your world would change. It's a, it is a bit like dressing for the job you want, even if it's not the job that you have. You energetically embody what you wish to attract more of into your life, and like attracts like. This oracle brings you a message. You don't need to push quite so hard to receive what is naturally coming to you. Your push comes from a place of uncertainty over whether or not you will succeed. You need to relax and have more faith in yourself. All things come in time, rightfully and according to great, to great loving wisdom. You are not immune to this. You shall have your time to shine, too. Rebel against any voice of fear within you or around you that tells you otherwise. It is okay to become softer, to feel the energy of what you wish to attract into your life, and to act, as much as you can, as though it's already that way. You are not fantasizing or daydreaming or failing to live in the real world. If you do this, you are actually working with the feminine art of manifestation through gentle beingness and attraction. As you soften into becoming what you are seeking, what you wish for will not be able to resist your shining, inviting presence. This oracle also comes with a special message that you've been working very, very hard. You've learned much and accomplished much, but it's now time to change your approach. Let go of any force in your approach to creation now. Everything serves a purpose, and learning the benefits and limitations of the more forceful way of manifestation through effort and willpower was a useful lesson. However, if you were to continue with that approach, it would stop working for you because you are now beginning to create on a far grander scale that is beyond what an individual can manifest through willpower alone. You are individually creating through your healing and art, but also contributing globally to new consciousness through your own spiritual growth. You are part of a global healing manifestation process. You are, through your way of being in the world, helping to birth a new awareness. This new way will heal the human heart and bring it back into a balance with nature. This is essential for the human soul to survive, flourish, and to cooperatively nurture the earth rather than destroy her natural resources. You may or may not be consciously aware of the extent to which this new way of manifesting through receiving rather than taking can actually help all of humanity, but nonetheless, it is playing an important role in greater human evolution. It is the power of attraction, of magnetism, rather than of striving and force that will replenish your energy and restore your body, mind, and heart after your struggle. This change in approach will encourage the shift from head to heart that is essential for your individual well-being and for the greater human evolution. You need to heal so that you can help the world to heal. You need to heal so that you can help the world to heal. Does this give you absolute permission now in your own mind to take an easier approach to your sacred, rebellious, creative manifestation? Healing process. Say aloud, I shine like the sun, radiant with grace, and all that I desire comes to me according to perfect timing. I relax, believe, and receive through unconditional love. This is now so. I'll say that one more time. I shine like the sun, radiant with grace, and all that I desire comes to me according to perfect timing. I relax, believe, and receive. Through unconditional love, this is now so. 
So you can repeat that and you can obviously replay this. And if you're interested in this particular card deck or finding out more about Oracle cards, this deck is by Alana Fairchild. You can Google her. I'll leave a link to her stuff. She's beautiful. She just was interviewed by Lee Harris. He's somebody who I follow who's a spiritual leader, a channeler, an amazing businessman, a musician. He has an incredible podcast where he interviews people who are change makers, changing the world. Um, so I just saw an interview with Alana and I've been following her for probably four or five years. And again, I got hers was the first card deck. I ever got, and I was not inspired to get any others because I just loved her so much. I do have one other one, actually, but this, not by her, by somebody else, and I, I don't love it. It's okay, but this one's my favorite, so it's called Sacred Rebels Guidebook, and this one is my favorite, and I think if you're ever stuck and you want to get quiet and you need a little message, it's kind of like flipping a page to a book in a book that you think can give you some wisdom. Some people use the Bible. Some people use other books that, that work for them. I have a couple that I work with, but I think these cards are really fun. You could do this with friends. You could do it, you know, on your own. In the beginning of the book, she shows you how to use five cards, and I think it's five in a circle, and they all take on different meanings for different aspects of your life, or you can just pick one, which is what we just did, but I have three others, and um, I don't think I'll be podcasting about all, all the other three, but I just thought I'd share this one with you because I'm thinking, man, we all need to hear this. All the pushing, all the strategies, all the blueprints, all the advice from all the gurus, um, seeing other people on social media and getting all the emails in your inbox. It's just, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of pressure sometimes. And instead of tuning into that or giving that power, we do have the power to step away, get quiet, go within, and trust that our intuition, that little tap on the shoulder, that little idea we had on a walk or taking a shower or while we were driving down the road, like that thing may very well be the thing that we should be focusing on instead of the other things that are push, push, pushing us and kind of maybe don't feel right and also probably sound exhausting. So this is encouragement to go with that. Maybe just write down the things that are coming to your mind. And if you have, like me, I get ideas all the time. If you have a bunch, maybe you could do the same thing. Like just sit and ask, you know, what is the thing? And close your eyes. Whether you have a card deck like this or not, just see what comes to you. Or maybe you shuffle them, <laughs> the scraps of paper, and then drop them or something like just just see what happens and i find that getting a little guidance from outside yourself sometimes is a pretty amazing thing so i hope that this resonates with you i don't always show the side of myself on this podcast i do much more on the audacious life my other podcast but i just wanted to share this with all the mamas out there all the women out there the caregivers especially just to say we need to kind of recall our feminine wisdom and intuition and really honor it and slow down. And it doesn't mean, as it said, it doesn't mean we have to give up our goals. It doesn't mean we have to give up anything. A vision for ourselves is anything. It can feel expansive because it's not as exhausting to imagine doing really, really well or achieving something that's really big. When things are attracted to you and there's more ease and it feels, it just flows and feels in line with who you are, all of it seems more attainable and you don't have to worry about burning out because it can recharge you and make you feel more energy and more alive and more, you know, on the right path, which is a beautiful thing. So anyway, I hope this helped you. I am thinking about you guys. Lots and lots of love to you. Hopefully you made it through the week. Your kiddos are okay. And next week they'll be back at school. Yay. <laughs> All right. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next episode.